one of the major ways of dealing with hearing loss, what we've been discussing at some length, is the cochlear prosthesis or the implant. And I have a short demonstration of that that gives you some sense of what the device does. All right, let's okay. see what you do. So this time when I say go, they'll both be on together, okay? okay. So, that, so do you want to watch his face? Yeah. And it's going to be on in three, two, one, go. Hi, buddy. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Christopher. Oh, it's okay, buddy. So this gives you some idea of how the implant or prosthesis works. Basically, there's an externally worn device that's sort of like a hearing aid. It picks up sound from the environment, breaks it down into different frequencies, the job that the hair cells normally do, and then sends that electrical information down a wire. So you see at the left, the externally worn device. Then you see the wire that's tunneled surgically into the cochlea, and it ends in a series of electrodes that actually shock the cochlear nerve that sends information on into the brain. A cross section through that implant is shown on the right, and you can see two little electrodes, the sort of mushroom-shaped objects. When current is passed between them, that will stimulate the nerve fiber that is running just nearby, and a particular frequency of sound will be heard by that person. This is one that is now more than 20 years old. I use the picture just because it's really simple to explain. It's easier to understand than the more modern ones. The idea is that this is surgically implanted into the bottom portion of the cochlea, and it has in it eight pairs of little metal electrodes. So each of the little shiny buttons is a pair of electrodes between which current can be passed. Now, what I'm going to do in the way of this demonstration is to play a snippet of human speech in which I've thrown away all of the information but five narrow frequency channels. It's quite distorted, so don't be surprised that you don't understand much, but here's what an early cochlear prosthesis perhaps would have sounded like. So probably few of you, if any, heard anything at all. Now the next one is similar, the same conversation, but 10 channels. And you'll begin to capture a few words. So what words did anybody get? Nothing. Nothing? Not me. Everything? <laughs> not, not you. <laughs> Marley said not me. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure some of you got a few words. OK. OK, the next one is. The next, the next one is 20 channels. So 20 channels is approaching the state of the art as of a decade ago. The popular prosthesis is now in everyday use by nearly 100,000 people worldwide. So, yeah. Prosthesis, 1,000 prosthesis, yeah. people. 1,000 world, worldwide, et cetera, OK? So it's still pretty distorted, but you begin to hear things. Typically now, prostheses have about 30 channels. They're not all active at the same time. Now I'm going to play the original snippet of speech. The cochlear prosthesis is now in everyday use by nearly 100,000 people worldwide. It's now 400,000. But now listen to 20 channels again, and you can't not understand it. The cochlear prosthesis is now in everyday use by nearly 100,000 people worldwide. It has a rather a remarkable effect. I mean, the brain rapidly adapts to this. And indeed, people who get these implants, postlingual people who used to speak and hear before they had a problem, very rapidly accommodate them and can comprehend speech again. 